So we take a couple of, of approaches in trying to, to estimate and principal fixed effects, you can just, the way, the way I like to think about them is you can look at the average achievement growth in a classroom. And so we would say in the fifth grade, we would compare how well the kids do at the end of fifth grade in math versus how well they did at the end of fourth grade in math. And we would take the average for all the kids in that room, and if we, this would be for a teacher, and then we would <coughs> control for differences in student characteristics like race and ethnicity and student income. And if the classroom did better than average, that, that teacher would be given a kind of positive measure. Their fixed effect would be positive. And if that classroom did worse than average for classrooms that had kids with those characteristics, that teacher would be regarded as not doing as well. And we do exactly the same thing for schools. So we think of the, the fixed effect as kind of a residual measure. It's how well did the school do in terms of student learning in comparison to what you would have expected given the background of the kids. And we're really worried about differences in poverty because in the U.S. differences in poverty are so predictive of differences in achievement. So did two principals working with basically the same distribution of kids if they did very differently, one of them is going to have a fixed effect which is much higher than the other one. And the fixed effect is kind of a measure, an index of their, uh, of their effectiveness. And as I said, the, the second approach is not to estimate a, uh, a kind of measure of effectiveness for each principal. It's rather to look at a school and every year in a school you know this that you can think of the test scores or the test score improvement is fluctuating it's going up and down and we're trying to see if it fluctuates or changes more around the time that the principal has changed and we attribute that additional magnitude of change or the additional fluctuation to the principal with some caveats that that we can talk about a little bit uh, um, when we get to it And then we're going to take our measures of how effective principles are and we're going to see if in fact the more effective principles are the ones who seem to be able to keep the relatively better teachers and tend to lose or, or the relatively worse teachers are more likely to leave their schools. And so that would be one important mechanism by which the, the better principal could actually have the positive effect on the school. And then the final component of this paper is to describe principal quality differences by transition status. So what we're really worried about, and people worry about a lot in the States, is if high poverty schools have a good principal, that principal will quickly leave to teach in a more affluent or a wealthier school district because it's a better job, it's an easier job. Not necessarily a better job, the one in the high poverty area may be more rewarding and the principal may, may actually like that much more. But in terms of how easy the job is, it's certainly an easier job. Um, if, you're, if you're teaching in an area where there's more parental support um, and the kids don't have as many difficulties and it's not as hard to hold on to your better teachers. And throughout the analysis we consider differences by poverty share. So we're really interested in does this mechanism by which principles um, influence outcomes or the variation in principal effectiveness vary a lot by the poverty level in the school? So in the states, uh, um, because of no child, the No Child Left Behind law, all of the states have to collect administrative data on all of the kids. And so they have to test, uh, to give these standardized tests every year, and they have to link the kids from one year to the next so that you can compile a longitudinal data set that has all the kids in the state every year. You follow the kids if they switch schools and you also build a data set for the teachers and the principals and all the people who work in the schools. And so this has been very nice in the U.S. Um, there are a lot of differences in the U.S. in terms of how um, willing the states are to share the data with researchers. And there's differences in the U.S. as to how advanced the states are in collecting data. 
So North Carolina is a state in the U.S. that is very willing to share the data with researchers. So there's a lot of people doing research on North Carolina. Um, Florida is another such state that has very good data. More, Florida's data set is comprehensive, almost like Denmark or Norway's data set is comprehensive. That they really have, they've merged information on schools, on criminal justice, so if the kids get in trouble with the police or go to jail, on the workforce, so you can see how kids do in the labor market after school. Texas has some of that, but Texas has been a state that's reluctant to let people do research. We started on this project very early, even before the federal legislation, because the state of Texas was collecting these data as far back as the early 1990s. And we were able to use these data because of John Cain, um, who died a number of years ago, who was there and had relationships with the state. So these are very nice data to do this work because they're tracking the kids and the adults who work in the schools over time and following them even if they switch schools. So in terms of the difficulties of trying to, to draw inferences about the principal's effect on the schools, there's a number of them. And the first one, and this is the case in almost all education research, and, and I think it's the case in, in Spain as well as the United States, that there's non-random selection of principals and students into schools. So families, in this, families make decisions about where to live and where to send their kids to school. Certainly in, in large part, I think, among many families on the basis of the quality of the school. And this means that some schools are going to have students who come from families that have a lot more educational resources than other schools. And, you know, in the U.S. context, traditionally, where you live determined where you went to school. So the neighborhood schools, people went to school in the neighborhood school unless they went to, to Catholic school or most went to Catholic school or there were some other private schools. Now it's much more complex because we have these charter schools which are public choice schools. We have magnet schools, which are another kind of choice school that operates within the public school system. And so you really have to worry a lot about the kids that are in a particular school may be very different than kids in another school, even if they look pretty similar in terms of the characteristics that we have. Um, and of course, the principals and teachers working in those schools also make choices. So there's many, many choices that go into determine the matching of kids and principals. Um, the second one is what we refer to as the tenure quality relationship is complex. So when you think of a, of a teacher, I think it's pretty straightforward to think as the teacher gets more experience, they're likely to do better, that they learn on the job and acquire more experience. At some point, maybe when they're old towards retirement, they, um, they may not do as well because they're not as energetic or interested. But in general, particularly early in the career, we think of improvement with experience. With principals, their time in a school, we wouldn't necessarily think that the school is going to get better over time. <clears throat> And that's because the decisions a principal makes this year with regard to who is teaching, what kind of curriculum is going to be used, so choosing a mathematics curriculum, setting policies in the school about student behavior. Those decisions also influence the way the school is operated in the subsequent years. It determines who's, which, what the stock of teachers is going to be like. And each year, the principals in the school they have a larger and larger effect on the school. They're really shaping the school. Their decisions accumulate over time. And so if somebody is not a very good principal and they year after year are making poor decisions, bad decisions, you would expect that school to get worse and worse over time. Where if somebody's a good principal and they're year after year making good decisions, you expect that school to get better over time. So we've, we look at the relationship between experience and particularly experience in a particular school and the quality of the school as being complex. That, that for a principal who's not very good, 
we would expect things to get worse with her time in the school. For a principal who is effective, we would expect things to get better the longer she's in the school. So, the effect of experience may be positive or negative. So, in the first set of estimates, we have, a, we have a model which is a typical value-added model, and that is we, we run a regression of math test score on last year's math score, um, a set of student characteristics, and we account for the fact that the test is changing over time. And then we include these principal <coughs> fixed effects, so the, the, um, what this is really capturing is did this school, during the time the principal was there, do better than other schools that had similar students? I think that's the best way to think about this. And we worry because the student characteristics probably don't capture differences among kids very well, that there may be other factors that influence these estimates, and we may be doing uh, a poor job of capturing um, the effects of the school during this period on, on the kids' outcomes. So the second thing we do is we include school fixed effects and essentially what that means is we're now comparing principals only with other principals who served in that same school at a different time. So you can imagine you have a principal for a number of years and she retires and then you have a new principal come in. And so we're going to compare the, the, the quality of education in that school when, from the time the older principal was there to the time that the newer principal is there. And those differences are what we're going to use to measure the variation in principal quality. So we focus only on comparisons within the same school because there's lots of things about a school that remain common over time. Yes?